Hi, I'm Kayla, and this is my husband, Corey, and this is Oliver. He has Dravet syndrome. And this is Olivia, and Emerson, and Elsie, and Avery, and Maylee, Oliver's service dog in training. And this is our life with Dravet. Hi, so my Invite kit came in the mail today. Actually it came in a little while ago, but we needed to, we were going to be out of town, and so we brought it so I could make a video. And what this is, this is a at-home genetic test kit. So why are we doing a genetic kit, test kit, you might say? It's because we're just trying to know, kind of, as far as all of, none of our other kids have had any issues with epilepsy. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can get genetic testing done. Um, that's something that we really did push for really early on because it could help and it did help us with Oliver's diagnosis and helping us know kind of how to treat him and what's going to be best for him and kind of long-term goals for him. So his genetic testing, there's lots of different ways it can be done. It was done with a blood draw through his neurologist is the one that put the referral in and, this, and then um, because we want to know well, even though there's only a 5% chance with Dravet, 90% of them, 95% are de novo gene mutations, um, there's still that little percent of chance where it could have been passed on. And so we would just want to know, do our other kids need to be tested or not? And so Kayla, she had genetic testing done that her primary care put a referral in, and they did a blood draw. And then we moved. I didn't have a primary care. And so we found an online company where we could they could do specific testing. We knew exactly what gene to look for. And so I was able to meet with the geneticist. Oliver. Oh, Oliver. I was able to meet with the geneticist online and get the referral submitted and get the kit sent to us in the mail. And so this is through a company called Invite. There's a lot of different ones. And so um, again, we're doing a specific epilepsy gene, you know, looking at the Dravet mutation that Oliver has just to see if I'm a carrier. If I am, then we know we need to get all of the rest of the tested. If not, then we know it's just a random mutation that he had, and so that's why we're particularly doing it. So, yeah, I have it. Yeah. Because even though you don't have epilepsy and the other kids don't, Dravet and the SCN1A gene has a spectrum where you're not necessarily showing signs of epilepsy all the way up to Dravet. Right, so there's a whole spectrum, and so we're just make, ruling out that there's not anything else we need yeah. to be concerned about. And it's a dominant gene, so if the kids are carriers, then they would pass it down. They have a high chance of passing it down to maybe their kids. Right, and so they want to make sure. So, here we go, looking at this is my saliva collection kit. Doesn't that just sound wonderful? I mean, I guess it's better than a blood draw. How to package the kit? I don't know. I think I'd rather get a blood draw than spit into a tube. <laughs> That's well, just me. I'm a weirdo. It's as fine. I when I've had my blood draw before, maybe spitting in a tube is better. <laughs> maybe for you. Different options for different people. So it says spit into the funnel until the amount of liquid saliva, not bubbles reaches the fill line shown in the picture. And they have a beautiful picture here of how you should spit into a tube. Hold the tube upright with one hand. Close the funnel lid with the other, firmly pushing the lid until you hear a loud click. Hold the tube upright, unscrew the funnel. Man, there are, there are like five steps here. It's spit, people. Use the small cap to close the tube tightly. Shake the capped tube for five. Oh, you have to take off the little collection cap. It's like a funnel. I see. And you have to shake it for five seconds and then discard or recycle the funnel. We're in a hotel. It's probably going to be discarded. But They've got a recycling. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. They've got they recycling. recycling. And it's in Spanish too. So, Great. let's see. Origin diagnosis for the collection of human DNA. What do you find? You find that's going to spit into a jar. What do you think? A jar. And then, just in case that like, you didn't get the first paper, it's all again. <laughs> Every language you could possibly want to get. Maybe. Maybe. 
Maybe every language. Lots of them, though. And then they have a nice great bag, so we'll be able to try to put in. Oh, good. I was wondering label. if maybe I accidentally then, threw that away. <laughs> because my spit is a biohazard. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. Okay, so. Nice close up. My spit tube looks like. Oh. <laughs> instructions on the inside, too. And instructions. Just in case you didn't know how to spit into a tube, here's how you do it. No, here's the thing, though. You could have missed the first or second pages of instructions. I thought I threw away a FedEx bag on accident, so I'm glad it was in there. Oh, good. Collect saliva by 11, 12, 20, 23. So you have a couple years. To collect my spit. Oh, good. But once we collect it, we have to send it. Daddy. Yes. <laughs> so, actually, Mama. Okay. Mama. Spit, spit your tongue. Yep. I've got a spit. <laughs> Do you want to hold it for Daddy? There you go. I don't know. That's dangerous. That's it. I don't want to spill my. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I should know better. I should know better. Oh, and they said like you're supposed to wait like 30 minutes after, so after eating and drinking, not having eaten or drinking anything for 30 minutes before you Dada. talk to someone. Did you want to be a lot of spit? I don't feel like I have enough spit Dada. in my mouth. See, that's why I don't like spitting into tubes. It's a lot of work to spit and you can't like drink anything to help you out. You got to right. just like... Work it. You gotta and work those salivary like, glands. Get a, like, drink a soda or something just to, you know, really get those But you can't. Working. Nope. Mm -hmm. This is all you. Manual labor. So you have to, like, fill it so the spit goes to the fill line, but not the bubbles. But oh, no so bubbles. I'm almost there. Yeah, check you out. You're a spitting master. <laughs> no, don't waste it. <laughs> <laughs> don't waste it. <laughs> Work it. Work it. <laughs> well, it's kind of nice that you can just do a slide off. Oh, did you want to get in on the action? Yeah, he's... He's doing it. Okay. Making you jealous. That's not spinning. It's kind of a gross habit. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think we're there. Are you sure? You've got enough? Is that, it says fill to there. Yeah, and there's no, no bubbles. bubbles. Great. So now that that is done, the spit is collected. I won't zoom in on it because you know it is my spit. But once it's made to the fill line, there's a little saline solution, and you're supposed to close this tightly so the saline solution pops into there. <laughs> and there it is, it fills up. And then you need to Hold the tube uprightly, unscrew the tunnel funnel from the tube. This doesn't bubble, feel safe. Bubble. <laughs> bubble. Where is your bubble? And in here. Where'd it go? Yeah. Where's your sippy? Oh, there it is. Here it is. Without Say thank you. Because that's what they do. Oh. Then there's this handy dandy little top cap. doesn't say what side is the... Oh, I assume this, this has got to be the side. <laughs> I wasn't sure if the blue side went down or not. Close it tightly. Then shake it for five seconds. One, two, three, four. That's five. a fast five. Hold on, shake it some more. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, That's one probably thousand, enough. Four. We're probably right. hope it doesn't mess it up. I don't think. Okay, and then we just label it with my information. Place it in the biohazard bag because, again, it is my saliva is biohazardous. And then ship it off to the company, and we'll know in a little bit what my genetic test results are. So uh, this. Again, for us, this was a really good option. They had some self-pay options where, because we knew the specific gene, that it's only like $100. Or you can, if you have a referral from like a primary care or insurance, um, to go through insurance as well. And then finally, make sure you register your kit online so that they know who it belongs to and you can get your results once it's done. 
we went through three different providers, three different ways. It just happens to be that the company in VK is the same company that all three of our tests are going to go through, even though they went through three different sources to actually get there. Um, so it's just an option, I think, for us, just gives us some peace of mind. Um, and so strongly encourage, and there's a lot, a lot more genetic options out there um, for you to kind of figure it out. It can be a can of worms, so again, you have to kind of, anytime you open up and start looking closer at like your genetics, there's always things that you may not want to find. But in this case, we want to know how everything's going with us. Can you say bye? Bye. Bye. Love you. Know you. Kisses? Mwah. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Mwah.